The following is a production of Government CIO Media. Hi, and welcome to GovCast. I'm Camille Tudy, Editor-in-Chief of Government CIO Media. And I'm Amanda Ziedet, Reporter with Government CIO Media. Amanda, what do you know about the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program? I know that I always write FedRAMP and never want to write it out, (laughs) but I'm very excited to learn more about the program. And even though it's not new, they're definitely getting into new technologies. And and to learn more about the program's success in the past year, I've, I've heard they've got a slew of more agencies coming on board and uh, new technologies in the mix. I'm very excited that we have the FedRAMP evangelist, Ashley Mahan, in the studio today. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us. So you came to GSA in November 2015 to stand up their FedRAMP evangelist role to help agencies understand FedRAMP and use the program. Three years later, which experience stands out most to you in terms of summing up your role as evangelist? One of the things that I love about this role is that I'm truly at the nexus between industry as well as uh, government agencies. Um, I'm involved in learning about a lot of really cool cloud technologies that are out there, as well as keeping cybersecurity at you know the forefront. And so um, over the past two years, one of the things that I'm most proud of is that we certainly have seen an upswing in the number of agencies that are participating with the FedRAMP program. Just in the last year alone, we've had more than 40 agencies come to FedRAMP, um, want to work with vendors for that FedRAMP authorization and start using cloud in a very secure way. So that is um, one of the best things that I see that's that's happening at this point in time, as well as is going to continue happening moving forward. Ashley, along with Matt Goodridge, you're known to be the face of FedRAMP. What does that mean to you and how does that feel? FedRAMP is a really unique government program as that it's that touches so many agencies, all agencies um, that are out there, as well as we work closely with a lot of industry partners. And it's a really cool job in working with some amazing technologists, security practitioners, innovate, um, innovators, um, and senior leaders across the government um, be, with the public and private um, sectors. And one big mission is to make sure that our federal information is secure and in going into these cloud technologies. And you're somewhat of a cheerleader for this program. How do you have that much enthusiasm for, for this program? Not to sound snarky, but where do you find that excitement and how did you make this your calling? That's a great question. So my story begins or is kind of um, encapsulates a lot of hard work, dedication, and really seizing opportunities um, when they when they arise. My background is actually not in information technology or cybersecurity in terms of my education. Um, I got a degree in business as well as a minor in real estate. I figured if things didn't work out um, for me in landing a business job after college way back when that I could always get into real estate and would have a really great contingency plan there. Um, so I got uh, started with a consulting company uh, in the D.C. area, supporting um, multiple different government agencies in the DOD, Intel community, and uh, federal law enforcement. Uh, And my title was an Information Assurance Analyst Junior. And that's what basically cybersecurity was called before it was called cybersecurity. It was called information assurance. And I immersed myself in a lot of training, um, was incredibly dedicated to this craft and the missions of the customers that I was supporting. And I really saw how technology was a catalyst to their mission and made things more effective. They were able to solve complex problems quicker and um, have more complete responses or answers. I realized how important technology was. And then I realized also how important it was to lock down those information systems that they were using to ensure that bad actors couldn't get this important federal, it's sensitive federal information. And so that's really, that sealed the deal for me. Um, That was my calling, what made me um, really, really um, take ownership of this craft. In working with my government customers at the time, I realized, um, well, they actually came to me and they said, hey, Ashley, you know, in the 2012, 2013 timeframe, I'm really looking into cloud. What What do you think of it, right, from a security standpoint? I said, I don't know. I've got to go figure that out. Everything that I've been doing was on, you know, on prem. And so I started researching cloud, researching technology, cybersecurity, compliance, and quickly came to the understanding of FedRAMP. And I said, this, this is going to be where where the future is. Cloud, technology, 
industry, government, cybersecurity. I said, I've got to align myself with this program some way, somehow. And so I took a job with another consulting company that was supporting the FedRAMP PMO as one of those information system security officers. So my consulting experience through the training and additional education and getting a master's in IT, I outfitted for this information system security officer role. So my whole job with FedRAMP at the time in a consulting capacity was to review those those, the security posture of those industry partners that were coming forward for that FedRAMP authorization with the Joint Authorization Board. Um, and the Joint Authorization Board is the JAB. Those are the CIOs of DOD, DHS, and GSA. And that is one way industry can achieve that FedRAMP authorization. So I was very focused on kind of the technical security and how these vendors were meeting the FedRAMP standards and helping them usher them through that authorization through the JAB. The position became available. The idea was created for a evangelist uh, for FedRAMP. And I certainly applied. Um, I thought, you know what, I can use some of my technical chops as well as um, I love communicating, I love talking with folks, I love solving complex problems, and applied for the job, and sure enough, uh, landed it. So as a member of GSA, you are essentially still serving other government agencies and employees. In your first job, you were consulting government customers. So how does that compare now? You know, you're, you're in the government, but you're still serving other government colleagues, employees, and before you were helping them from an industry perspective. So where do you draw that comparison in, in those practices and, ex- and expertise? For me, it was definitely uh, the calling to join government was, was to serve and to help others. The role as the evangelist on FedRAMP is, is very complex. You're dealing with many different customers out there, whether they're in industry, whether they're government agencies, and they all have different needs and desires. And and goals that they're both trying to accomplish. And so when I was consulting, in a, well, in my consulting capacity, I really got to understand how important it was to understand your audience, understand your customer. And for me in my world now at FedRAMP, prior to my FedRAMP role, it was kind of like the federal government at large, right? That's my customer. But now at FedRAMP, I have precision focus on my cover- customers in, in terms of industry, as agencies, like for instance with agencies. It's not just the federal government. It is, okay, I'm working with DOI, Fish and Wildlife Service, the National Conservation Training Center, and the Eagle Cam. And this is just an example, but we've got to get that Eagle Eagle Cam in the cloud, right? And so my customers stem from all five, six of those customer families, right? Because they all impact each other and making sure that each one of those different user groups are all informed. They understand FedRAMP and it's different messages to each one, right? The Eagle Cam folks and FedRAMP to them might mean something very different, right? Because they might be doing a lot of the technical schematics and and building that, you know, that camera out and actually moving, you know, that um, technology to the cloud from a technical standpoint. Whereas, you know, you dealing with DOI and Fish and Wildlife Service, they might be offering or they might be, they have a different role in this whole process. Process, right, so it's really getting to know your customers and customizing that message for them, and that's something that I 100% attribute to my time as a consultant, making my customers' mission my mission, um, and something that I find has been very beneficial um, working in this role on FedRAM. So, as the evangelist for the FedRAM program, it implies that you do a lot of education. Talk us through how you approach industry partners and how you work on educating them. What are some misconceptions that you are still facing to this day when it comes to the program? So one of the things in this role is that it's it's a phenomenal experience in that I'm literally stuck in between agencies and I'm also in between industry and helping them work together more efficiently with one another to have agencies use their cool, secure cloud services, as well as ha- helping uh, industry get that FedRAMP authorization so that can happen. Um, so from a training standpoint, we I am open to anything and everything, and it goes at all different levels. So for instance, and it's very customized. So a lot of industry conversations that I have, they have customers. And they're amazing because they bring me into those conversations and they say, hey, I'm working with this agency, this person that might be a business you know, manager or the division chief. They're not a cybersecurity expert. They might know a FedRAMP, but not actually the inner workings. And it, it doesn't necessarily, that's not within their um, area of expertise. That's not within their scope of work. And so industry is a great partner in bringing me in to help it fuse or help have those informative conversations with that business 
business or mission owner. And then I do a lot of connecting the dots. I'm like, okay, we got to get you connected with this person in this office because this can the authorization can happen through them, right? So a lot of what I do is connecting the dots um, and. Uh, have industry, they, they bring me in to, to help that awareness. From agencies, there's a lot of events that we do there, and we work at all different folks. Um, the senior leaders, they're basically focused on the bottom line, right? I need this to be secure, and what's the bottom line, and how, how much, and how long is this going to take me to get there? Whereas if I work with some of the system admins, right, or other folks that are, of, um, uh, you know, kind of the boots on the ground doing the technical modifications and spinning up VMs and things like that, It's a much more of a different conversation of, okay, what do I need to do in order to apply this requirement or the security requirement? What what are the schematics? What are the configurations that I have to make? And then we dive deep into into that conversation as well. So the training um, really depends. And with FedRAMP, you'll see within the last year, and we're going to continue doing this, we've had specific training uh, events catered for those specific groups, right? So we have information system security officer training. Those are the pros in the agency from a security standpoint that are reviewing these documents um, and the the deliverables that these vendors are providing um, that demonstrate that they're adhering to these security requirements, right? So I have a crash course day, full day, where I have uh, agency experts that have done this, that know the FedRAMP process, that have gone through these, this process um, and going through all the different things to make those ISSOs successful. So it really just depends, but we have a very customized approach. It's not a one-size-fits-all based on the unique need in the, in the customer set that we are um, trying to help engage with and, and uh, with the program. Do you see um, any space for the program to evolve? Will it change over the next few years or so? What's your take on that? I think change is inevitable. Um, as tech Technology changes as it's constantly changing. You hear every three years new technology is coming out. The way that we work from a technology standpoint changes. FedRAMP, we're gonna re- we're gonna we're gonna remain diligent and continue to change with it. You know, we need to evolve. We have to make sure that as these new technologies are popping up. I mean, you have AI, you have a lot of really cool things that are coming out there. We need to make sure that if the government wants to use it, that those technologies are secure, right? And you're going to continue to see FedRAMP to evolve in that way to make sure that we're accommodating our government customer, our government agencies need in using these technologies. So I wanted to ask, um, you said in terms of training, you're open to anything, all ideas. Has it gotten super creative or unique and agency specific or customer specific? Does the range of training vary? The range of training definitely does vary depending on the agency need. Some agencies are very familiar with FedRAMP. They have many different resources. They understand the program. There are some other agencies that are small, and they say, you know what, my my team to do this work, to review these packages, is me, <laughs> you know, one person. How do you see that partnership with industry or the work that you do with them directly? How do you see that changing? Industry is a huge player in the FedRAMP with FedRAMP. We're both in it for the same reasons. We want them to be authorized. And so um, we work hand in hand with them, understanding, um, wanting to understand from a technical standpoint, the capabilities that they offer, right? What what are those services that they're looking to bring and sell to the government? And by the way, how are they making them technically secure? Um, that's one of the things that I love about working with uh, industry. We have over 180 different in- industry partners engaged with the program, either trying to get a FedRAMP authorization already have one. And as my role as the evangelist, I love sitting down with them, understanding not just them as a company, right, but understanding the, their different product offerings. What's their pipeline? What, what's their strategy in, in, in achieving a FedRAMP authorization? Um, as well as uh, understanding the technical security that they have in place that's protecting it. Because a lot of the time, agencies come to me and say, hey, I'm looking for the XYZ capability. Do you have any vendors that are FedRAMP authorized? Or do you know of any vendors that are interested in getting you know, a FedRAMP authorization? And that's one of my commitments to industry is I'm more than happy to help connect the dots, right, Um, help agencies work more effectively with industry um, and make sure that those informed conversations in modernizing their IT or moving to cloud is uh, in place. You said earlier that 40 agencies uh, last year alone have come to FedRAMP. Is outreach still a challenge? There's a lot of outreach that we do on uh, FedRAMP uh, between blogs and websites and different types of email. Or we have an email listserv that we maintain with 6,000, 7,000 subscribers. Our website, we're constantly pushing out new information and highlighting it in our blog. Outreach is 
absolutely critical for us, but there's still a lot more work that we need to do. There's still a lot of agencies out there that have given us a chance at FedRAMP that have that are going through the process, but there's much, there's so many more cloud technologies that are out there that um, we want to have come through the program and we want agencies to be that willing partner to, to usher them through. You mentioned more emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. So how are you keeping an eye towards the horizon with that in mind that there's a new technology probably coming up uh, in the Uh, rear view mirror we are a lot of uh, a lot of what we do is we have established communications with different agencies and as they express that there's a demand with any of those emerging technologies like AI or blockchain or whatever it may be um, we we make sure that we understand you know what their need is and we also hear from industry um, and that they have these capabilities that they would like to bring through and offer to the government and then where does FedRAMP play in that equation So right now, today, what are you seeing in terms of these newer technologies that industry partners want to bring into the government that they haven't already? I'm seeing a lot of uh, of these technologies come through the FedRAMP program with certain agencies and be included within a cloud offering, like a software as a service or a platform as a service or an infrastructure as a service. And they are taking these technologies and they were they are adding them to, to that cloud offering that they're bringing through. And so for us, it's just a matter of the transparency and understanding how the security you know, is, is, is happening um, with those particular products. And then for agencies to make a risk-based decision, an informed decision, whether or not, you know, they feel that their data is adequately protected in these environments. You know, sometimes with FedRAMP, we we lose sight of uh, this isn't just a check-in-the-box program, right? This is all about cybersecurity, making sure that uh, the appropriate protections are in place um, with uh, our industry partners, but also making sure that agencies are making effective risk management decisions as they are authorized to do in terms of the um, their usage and the protections that they need on these systems to protect their information. Do you do you find that some agencies are still hesitant to scale their cloud offerings? So with agencies, there's so many of them that different agencies are um, further along in the process than than others in terms of using cloud. Um, so you see some agencies that are 100% on board You know, you hear things, we are 100% cloud, things like that, scaling, no problem. They've got it. They're a well-oiled machine. You have some other agencies that are much smaller, right? And they're just starting to dabble into cloud. Um, and they have a different approach, right? And so one of the things that I like to work with them on is just just give it a chance, right? Just start, just start in small bite-sized chunks, like, for instance, Use, use a software as a service, right? Turnkey. Start start see, see how your customer experience is with, with the software as a service, right? And a lot of the security work the vendor is providing, right, through this FedRAMP authorization process. So the conversation is different with different agencies that you're working with. So if you were given complete creative freedom and a blank check, how would you better the FedRAMP program? So it might not just be um, about a blank check, but something that I would like to see from like a cultural change across the government is when I was out at RSA earlier this year, I met with a lot of different companies and I saw the and I was told the budgets that industry spent on R&D and coming up with these incredible, cool technology, innovative technologies. And If I could have, you know, my wish, it would be for agencies to see, to not replicate, but leverage what industry is doing. They are coming out with some amazing things. And FedRAMP, we are really one of the catalysts or helping um, agencies work with industry, right, and to use those services. So we don't want to recreate the wheel as government. We want to be able to leverage what industry and all the great work that they've done Do you have any examples of what you perceive are the greatest wins for the program in the past year or so? A great win happened within the last year. I was working with a small business. It wasn't just small business. It was a startup. And there were literally two people that started up this business and they received some capital funding from some investors. And They said, look, I think I have a customer here, a federal government customer, but I'm being told I have to do FedRAMP. They said, I am literally living penny by penny, answering to the investors daily, right, on everything that we do. And I've got to get through this FedRAMP process, and I have to do it as efficiently as possible. 
And, you know, I have a lot of empathy, right? Coming from a family of, um, from small business, um, entrepreneurs. Every every second counts. Every penny counts. And so sitting there and working with them, putting myself in their shoes um, and help guide them through this process throughout. And I will say that a big success was they did get through. They got that authorization and it's just done wonders um, for them um, and their business. And they did it with incredibly limited resources. The other story is I was working with a fire marshal once. And I mean, when we, when we think about cloud and we think about technology, it impacts everybody, right? So I was working with a federal fire marshal once and said, hey, look, I need this emergency. I need, I need to be able to report emergencies out there to, to my team and to my agency as efficiently and as quickly as possible once things happen. He said, I, I, I got this tool, I'm, I'm using it, but now I know I have to, to get a FedRAMP authorization. And my heart just goes out for him because he's literally a fire marshal. He's putting out fires. He has no idea what, you know, what to do from cybersecurity. And then it's just walking his walk on what it must be like to now find out that there's this authorization or this that he must go through. And so um, that was also an amazing moment. And seeing that particular product that he was using um, go through and through his agency and connecting the dots and connecting him to the right folks in his agency to, to make that happen. It must be important to explain to small businesses that FedRAMP isn't a barrier. It's an opportunity to work with government. Yeah, it, it, or I get the comment a lot that, man, I wish I talked to you four months ago. If your industry or if your agencies and you're trying or you're trying to figure out how to get this FedRAMP authorization, please contact us. We'd be more than happy to speak um, to you about you know any any efficiencies, help strategize, whatever it may be, um, to get you unstuck or get you through this process as quickly as possible. In general and in terms of FedRAMP, why is it so important that government keep pace with industry when it comes to cloud and IT modernization and eventually emerging technologies? Technical innovation is occurring in industry at a rapid rapid pace. Um, I mentioned about the story at RSA where you have these uh, industry partners that are investing tremendous amounts of resources into uh, developing their products and, and innovating. And from from a government standpoint, if we can realize um, and harness that some way, somehow, that creates so many efficiencies for us. So um, again, kind of the tagline is let's leverage, let's not replicate. Let's solve complex problems quicker, more efficiently. What would be your call to action when it comes to private sector, especially the smaller startups that may feel a little bit intimidated getting involved in the FedRAP process. Give us a call. Give us a chance. Reach out to us. We are here to help you get through this process. And if you have an agency that's willing or that would like to use your product, that's all I need to go and start that conversation with them and let them know what their roles and responsibilities are in um, achieving that FedRAMP authorization. And they will find out pretty quick that they have a great industry partner as a part of this team um, that is uh, adhering and, 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 and locking down their systems as required by the federal government and are transparent in their security DNA um, and providing that over to their agency customer. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here. You really gave us great insight into what your role as the evangelist for the FedRAMP program really entails. This episode is sponsored by Lumina. Lumina's mission is to use AI systems to protect the world. To learn more about the company, visit its website at luminaanalytics.com. All right, so we just had a wonderful conversation with Ashley Mahan from the from FedRAMP. She's the evangelist at FedRAMP and known as Mrs. FedRAMP or the face of FedRAMP along with Matt Goodridge. It's great to know that 40 agencies have come to FedRAMP in the past year alone. They're obviously doing the right thing with outreach and getting agencies to adopt cloud services and offerings and shared services. So that's wonderful. It's really wonderful to hear her passion and how she really wants more industry partners. So whether you are a startup or a more established player in the space, she wants those people to reach out and be a partner. I also found it really, really interesting that... The Eagle Cam is moving to the cloud. Who who knew that? 
Yeah, and I think it's cool to know that small businesses can even end up stumbling upon fed rent authorization, like in her case studies that she was explaining. A small business thought it was kind of a barrier, and she was like, nope, this is this is an opportunity for you. We can get you through this smoothly so you can work with the government. And that seems like a wonderful opportunity for small businesses. If you are interested in reaching out to Ashley, make sure to hit her up on Twitter, FedRap Ashley, very fitting. And we're on Twitter too, at GCIO Media. So make sure to follow us, throw us a like. And make sure to subscribe to GovCast on your favorite podcast platform. And I'm Amanda Ziede. And I'm Camille Tudi. See See you next time. Govcast is a production of Government CIO Media. It's produced by Tracy Madigan and edited by Rob Ford. Our theme music is provided by Big Hoax. Our executive producer is Michael Hoffman. If you're interested in sponsoring Govcast, you can email Andy Andrews at randrews at governmentcio.com. Govcast.